Hi. If you've got relaxed watching the previous parts of this series, thinking how simple all these crossovers are, then get ready for something that will strain your brain. It's not going to be easy. However, if you know how to saddle this horse, it can take you to new unknown lands. Please welcome the Spectrum Crossover. What it does is it looks at the signal's partials, sort them by levels, then send the high-level partials into the rightmost band and the low-level partials into the leftmost band. If more than two bands are used, the remaining partials are distributed between other bands. The crossover is linear phase and fully transparent. Note, partials are everything the sound is made of, a fundamental harmonics and non-harmonics. Confused? I have to show you some testing first, then things will become much easier to grasp. Here is a saw wave generated by M oscillator with modulated amplitude. I'm sending it into the M tremolo MB, where I set up the three band spectrum crossover. At the moment, I don't need anything but the crossover, so I bypass all bands. Now, if I connect a frequency analyzer to each band, this is what we get. The partials, traveling from one band to another. And then, when they are mixed back, we get the original saw wave. It may look like a frequency split crossover in action, but don't forget, it's the level of each partial that is selecting the target band, not the frequency. If I send a sine wave sweep at the same level into the spectrum crossover, it will always stay in the same band. In my case, the third one. But then again, don't confuse it with the level crossover, where the level of the whole signal, not its individual partials, defines the band which it is going to. All right, now when you have an idea about the spectrum crossover, Let's build some effects with it. Let's hear an example with the M Dynamics MB first. It changes the sound quite a bit, doesn't it? One would expect similar effects from a multiband compressor, but it is not. So what's going on here? As you can see, I use the three band spectrum crossover. This band compresses the high level partials. Let's solo it. Sounds a bit strange. That's because what we are hearing is just the high-level partials of the guitar. This band processes the low partials. And the middle band takes care of the rest. Because I have an independent access to the low-level partials, I can simply boost them and that will make the sound brighter. the work of high shelf filter. However, it is just a coincidence that high frequencies of the guitar are at low levels. If I process a hi-hat, the effect will be the opposite. Again, it's not only the low frequencies that go up, but also a noise tail because it has low energy. Before, it was masked by high level partials. One more example, with M delay MB this time. Listen to this drum loop.
Now listen to the original. It's much simpler, isn't it? Let's have a look at how it was done. Again, three band spectral crossover. First, I bypassed all bands to tune the crossover's regions to my taste. Next, I solo each band and play a RAM with delay times and feedbacks. Then I play back the drum loop and change some parameters a bit here and there. Basically, that's all. Pay attention to the bass drum again. Sounds like two of them playing together. Now let's go through the crossover's parameters. The level slope defines a separation between bands. That is, how many partials neighbouring bands have in common. The higher the value, the smaller the number, and the shorter the transition. The smoothing controls how partials influence the surroundings. Basically, it tends to minimise the distortions in exchange for some CPU power and band separation. If you can't hear the difference, leave it in 0%. To reveal the distortions, solo the band. If you have worked with M Analyzer, you are familiar with its slope parameters action for sure. The tone controller does a similar job, but here it's responsible for a distribution of partials between bands. Higher values give more energy to the high frequency partials. As a result, more partials are pushed to writer bands. The spectral resolution sets FFT size and overlap. Higher values give a better frequency resolution, but can smear sharp transients, and vice versa. Experiment with this one to see its effect on a signal. If in doubt, leave in the default position. In most of the cases, it will work just fine. We have finally come to the end. Yes, it is a very unusual crossover type, but it gives you a completely new way to work with the sound. Good luck, and thanks for watching.